Welcome back, guys. So today, I want to take a look at the NES30 arcade stick from 8BitDo. So we're going to go ahead and unbox this, and I'm going to walk you through setup on the Raspberry Pi, and how do I feel about this guy? What are my impressions? How, do, how does she feel? So let's go ahead, get this bad boy out of the box, and take a closer look at her. So the box is pretty nice. comes in a decent quality box. You know, what do you expect, really? And it is packaged well to, to protect it, you know, while in transit or whatever. So it, it's, it's nicely protected. Shouldn't get damaged getting shipped to you inside this. Comes with a really long USB cable if you wanted to go ahead and use this wired. Nice little instruction manual. I don't even really want to say nice because eh, the instruction manual is kind of vague on how things work. But I'm going to set you straight on how to get this set up. Got the cool little logo up in the front, the light, little 8-bit dough. The bottom is metal, which is nice. I like that they did that instead of cheaping out and, and using plastic. Looks like there's some holes that you can use to mount this bad boy if you wanted to. You do have a few switches, your X input, D input, X, Y, D pad, turbo, pair, select, and start. And there is your charging port. Or if you want to use it wired, you can go ahead and use it that way as well. So... I mean, first impression, she looks good. Got some nice heft to her. Everything feels all right. Feels as it should for an arcade stick. There are some plastic on the little buttons you got to remove. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. And then go ahead and get started on setting this bad boy up. So let's go ahead and take a look on what we need to do to get this party started. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so now we are on our Raspberry Pi within RetroPie, and I want to go ahead and get this 8-bit dose set up. So I've already gone through the process of doing so, and I came across a few troubles. So, hey, luckily, I suffered in order to show you guys how it's done properly. And ignore the little lightning bolt up in the corner on my screen. I'm baffled as to why whenever I use my Biku case for the Pi 3, I get that. When I have my Pi 3 out of it or in the flirt case, I never get that lightning bolt. Don't know why. Starting to wonder if something is touching that should not be touching in that case, but that's for another time. So what we need to do, first off, let's go ahead and go to RetroPie settings. So make sure you have a keyboard or something else set up. So within RetroPie settings, obviously, let's go ahead and go on over to Bluetooth. Now, once we're in Bluetooth, you know, we have a few options. Register and connect a Bluetooth device, remove, blah, 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 all that good stuff. What we want to do is register this device. So let me go ahead and bring up an image of our controller so I can explain what needs to be done. Because I was kind of have I had a little bit of confusion, just to be honest with you guys. But what you need to do is up in this left-hand corner of your controller where you see X input and direct input, or D input for direct input. Make sure that first switch is on D input. And then your next one, just leave it on X and Y. So that way, if you have it set to X input, it's gonna show up as an Xbox 360 controller. And I just had issues binding my buttons doing that. So to save yourself the trouble, D input, you are good to go. X, Y, leave it there. So on this controller, your start button is also going to be your power button. So you hold the start button down for a moment, and then the blue LED that's to the left of the start button will start blinking. It'll do a slow blink. Now, if you want to set this up and pair it, which is what we are going to do, you will hold the pair button down for two seconds, which is right next to the select button. You hold that down for a couple seconds, let go, and then your blue LED will flash very quickly that's showing that it is in pairing mode so once we have that done we're, we're we got our controller on we're in pairing mode we're going to go ahead and register and connect to a bluetooth device so make sure you have a keyboard or something else attached that way you can select all this obviously so we'll go ahead and register and it will search and while it is searching and it comes up, it'll bring up anything that's in Bluetooth mode, you know, around you. So 
you might get a list of stuff. You might not just depending upon what it picks up, but to know that it actually picked up your stick, you need to make sure that it says eight bit though. NES 30 arcade. If it says something else, or it's just a series of numbers and letters on that side, then it is either not your stick or it's not picking it up correctly. So you'll go ahead and cancel and then just go right back to it. Now, once you, once you find it and it shows up, go ahead and hit OK on it. If I hit OK right now, it's just going to tell me that it failed because it's already connected. So no big deal. Once it connects and pairs, it's going to ask you to go ahead and select another option. And that option is just select the first one and you'll be good to go. You'll connect. If the first one doesn't work, just scroll down to the next. But typically the first one, you know, I can't show it right now unless I just remove this controller but uh it's kind of pointless you'll see what i'm saying select the first one you'll connect automatically you'll be good now i went ahead and i set up the udev rule for joypad for the 8-bit dose and whatnot um when i before i try i tried doing it without setting up the udev rule and i ran across a lot of issues where i couldn't bind certain buttons on the stick but once i set up the udev rule everything worked perfectly so i would recommend going ahead and selecting that once you select that it's going to tell you hey you need to reboot for this to work but we'll go ahead and reboot in a moment you're going to need to do one other thing first i also want to point out down here you might see this the 8-bit dough mapping hack just leave it off don't worry about that and we'll be good so once you've done that you set up the udev rule go ahead and click cancel and then from there, go ahead and go back to your RetroPie setup. Go to Configuration and Tools. And then go down to Emulation Station. The first option, Clear Reset Emulation Station Input Configurations. Select that. It'll clear it. And then go to Reboot. Let your system reboot. And then... Once your system has completely rebooted. Okay, upon reboot, we will be greeted to a screen like this. Now, make sure your 8-bit dough has been powered on. The blue light should be solid. Once it's solid, we're good to go. Go ahead and hold any button down, and it should say 8-bit dough NES 30 Arcade. Now, go ahead and follow the prompts up, down, left, right. Our start and select, obviously are marked on the controller so start and select good to go there now the only issue is looking at the controls the a b x y are backwards as compared to a nintendo controller if you want this to just work without you changing configurations for buttons you're gonna have to press the a button for the b button the b for the a x is y and then y is x so they'll just be opposite as long as you do that Everything should be fine. You'll be able to play Street Fighter. Everything will be configured properly. So A is going to be B. B is A. X is going to be the Y button. Y is going to be the X button. Now, left shoulder is going to be our RB. Right shoulder is going to be the RT. Left trigger is going to be LB, which is going to be the last button on the top. Right trigger is going to be LT, the last button on the bottom. So we're done. The rest of these cannot be configured. So just hold the button down to skip them. And it'll just say not defined. And once we get to the bottom, we will have an input for our hotkey enable. I just typically leave that to select. But you can change it to whatever you want. But I'm going to go ahead and press select we are good to go and as you see select is button 10 so a lot of controls you see the buttons are assigned differently not all controls are going to work the same the button designations will be different so that's just something of note here now that that has been completed we will be good to go to check out some gameplay so i'm going to go ahead and just start up a Street Fighter game. That's always, for me, one of the best tests to check out controls. And now that we are in it to win it, our select button should insert coins. 
and she does. Start button is working. Let's go ahead and see if we can throw some fireballs and some dragon punches up in here. Man, already aggressive. Well, I'm getting my I'm getting my my butt whooped here, but everything feels fine. Everything is responsive. Everything's looking pretty good. So my my one impression though, and I have used this controller a little bit so far, is that the box feels great. It's heavy, but the buttons are of very low quality. I have not opened this yet. I'm going to open this up tomorrow and change it out to Sanwa parts. Um, but the buttons and the micro switches on these just, they feel like junk to me. The actual joystick, uh, it's, it's very, you know, I can't even say these are mid quality parts as far as the buttons and joystick goes. These to me are very low quality, which is very unfortunate for an $80 controller. Uh, you know, yeah, I didn't expect to have Sanwa parts, but I kind of was hoping for higher quality knockoffs than what we actually got. So that's kind of unfortunate for me. It is what it is, but if you have parts or you're able to buy parts, I highly recommend changing this out for Sanwa parts. These buttons just do not feel good. They feel very cheap. If you're accustomed to authentic Sanwas or even good clone Sanwas, there's some good ones out there. These are just disturbingly low quality. The same thing with the stick. The stick is a, a four-way. I can tell without opening her up. Like I said, I'm going to do another video opening this up and changing out the parts. But it's, I just don't like the feel of it. I just don't like the feel of it. For a stick that has Bluetooth, $80, it's, it's going to be up to you to decide. Am I happy I bought this? Yes. But I have parts that are readily available to swap out that I, you know, I've, I've done arcade work for people. I've built sticks, done bar tops, full size cabinets, stuff like that. So I, I have an abundance of parts and supplies. So it's nothing for me just because I have them. I can go ahead and swap it out. But if you have to buy an extra stick and buttons to make this feel quality, you're, you're looking at that $80 turning into an over $100 stick. So you have to look at your options out there. If you want a Bluetooth stick, yeah, I'll, I'll recommend it. But you need to understand that if you want it to feel great, you're going to have to swap out some parts. Now, if you want a stick that you can just plug in and use USB, which this one can, I don't recommend buying this because there are other better options out there for a USB hardwired stick. This is going to be a bit pricey if you wanted to use it that way, and I don't recommend it. So I'm going to upgrade my stick. I'll report back on that. Right now, uh, you know, two thumbs up. No, I'll give it one thumbs up and one thumbs down, you know, right in the middle. Right in the middle because I've got to put in some work to, to be happy with this. If you've never used a stick before or you're not accustomed to those kind of parts that I mentioned, this might be okay for you. But for those of us who have used Sanwa or real hap parts, you know, there's a difference between the two, or Saimitsu, anything like that, you're going to immediately tell that the quality of these parts are, are garbage. They're just garbage. The overall box and everything else, it feels great. It's got some nice weight to it. I love the look of it, but man, I got to swap these buttons and stick out. At minimum, the stick. The buttons I can deal with, but the stick, it, it's got to go. It just has to go. But I hope this was, you know, informational. I hope you guys appreciated it. You know, smash that like button if you could. If you're interested in this bad boy, I'll put a link in the description. Just know what you're getting yourself into. I tried to be as unbiased as I can and give you the 411 on what we got going on here. And at this moment, I'm recommending it only to those people who have the means of changing the parts out. If you want 
a wired stick, don't get it. If you want a Bluetooth stick, get it, but understand you're going to spend some money getting this to feel pretty good. Right now, it's just okay. And for $80 just to be okay, not cool, man, not cool. So subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Check out a bunch of other stuff I got going on. And then the one thing, I do have this stick for giveaway. Who knows if it's going to happen, though? You know, I'm going to be a little ambitious here. But if you guys can get this video to 5,000 likes, yes, I said 5,000. 5, 000, 0, 0, Add that zeros. 5,000 likes. Is it impossible? Maybe. But we'll see. Get this video to 5,000 likes. Comment. Do all that great stuff. And you will be entered. We got one week. I don't think it's going to happen. But why not try? 5,000 likes by next Sunday. One of you guys in the comments who's a subscriber who has liked the video and dropped the comment will win this stick with the up upgraded parts. And I'll give you the, the leftover parts as well. But let's see what happens. If we don't hit it, we'll try again another time. But let's go ahead and try to make that happen. Catch you guys next time. Boom!